What makes us, us? Uh, all of that is important because the answers to those questions are vital. And so just really quickly, listen, when, when we planted as a church, we, we, we pieced together seven values. And, and so we put this right there on the website for everyone to see uh, these seven values uh, very quickly of, of just the things that we want to elevate in our church. And the first is truth. These aren't in any particular order. Um, but the first list is truth because we believe Jesus was exactly who he said he was. And we want to tell the world, we want to tell the community about that truth, the truth of Jesus. Uh, we also, we value discipleship because we want you to grow with Jesus. We don't want you to just maybe have some spiritual moment and, and say, that's it, I'm good. But our relationship with God through Jesus is real and it should compel us and, and draw us and move us forward. So that's called discipleship because everyone has a next step to take with God. Uh, and then we have experiencing because, I mean, there's, there is nothing like experiencing God. There's nothing like experiencing the Holy Spirit. And we value that. We want people to come to church and experience God. We want you to go to small group and experience God. We want, we want that to be part of your relationship with God on a normal, daily basis, that you are experiencing God. Uh, another one that kind of catches people off guard. They're like, what does that mean? We say we value peacemaking because we are human. And man, don't we like to kind of put up walls against other people? well, he wasn't so friendly today, I guess I'll put up a wall or, you know, like, oh, I didn't like the way she said that or whatever, you know, and I don't want anything to do with it. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to keep the peace. But that's not what Jesus says in the Gospels. He says, blessed are the peacemakers. And so that means that we are going to sit down and we're going to have a heart to heart. That means that, that you love me so much that you would sit down and say, I want to give you all the grace in the world, but there are some inconsistencies. I love you so much that I want to sit down with you and say, hey, listen, I love you more than anything, but I've just noticed this, or, or, or there's a weird thing between us. Can we talk about that? It's being intentional so that no root of bitterness can seep into our hearts because nothing really erodes a church like bitterness, right? So we, we value peacemaking. And listen, um, I know my, my position in the church, it's easy to say, oh yeah, I'm sure you've had that conversation with plenty of people in here. Hey, kind of, yeah. But also, I've been on the receiving end of that conversation plenty of times with gracious people who said, Pastor, I love you, we believe in you, but there's something amiss here. Can we talk about it? And so, church, thank you. Thank you for trusting me to do that, and, and I thank you for, uh, uh, for allowing me to, to have those conversations with you. But this is, hey, it's church. It's okay. It's okay. Let's, let's sit down. Let's make peace. Let's be unified. Um, another value we have is reaching. Obviously, we want to reach our community in the name of Jesus. Uh, another value we have is generosity because I believe that God is generous, that while yet we were sinners, Christ died for us. That's generous, isn't it? That while we were still in, in the depths of our worst sin ever, Christ still loved and died for you. Like, God is a generous God. And I think that that reflex should be in us too, that we should have a generous reflex. When's the last time you went to the doctor, you know, and, and they test your reflexes, right? I think our reflexes should often look like that because of what God has done in us, we want to do for others. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we, we say health, and this isn't that we're clocking your, your 40 time into church every Sunday or anything like that. Don't worry, Joey, you're good. Uh, no, this is about really has much to do with you and your pursuit of health. And by that, we mean that we value people, that we want to display authenticity. We want to maintain accountability because there are just too many churches that um, are, are, are not shaped or, or, or do not at least value healthy leadership. And we want to be a church with healthy leadership. Uh, and that means that that leadership is also accountable and open um, and so that doesn't matter who's who or who has what title, who doesn't have what title. We simply want to be a healthy expression of God's love where everyone gets to play. And so as a church, you know, we've begun our, our second year and we have learned so much. And I just want to, I've, I've taken some time to just kind of reflect on that. But also the church has changed for us in a great way. And from that, I think we have found really a new battle cry. I think we, we, we found a new, uh, 
I guess, a, a new phrase that I want us to embrace. Because, listen, there is a war happening, whether you're comfortable with that analogy or not. It's good versus evil, okay? And as believers, we're drafted into this war. It's real, it's here, but we have a strategy. Are you ready? You ready for the strategy? It's a simple, simple statement. It comes from the words of Jesus. I'll read the scripture first, then I'll give it to you. From John 13, verses 34, 35, Jesus, he says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So how do we fight? With love. How do, we, how, how, do we, how do we reach our community? With love. How do we sit down and make peace with people? With love. It's with this love we have for one another. And, and listen, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. Those aren't synonyms, you see, okay? Simple and easy are not synonyms. It is simple to understand, but it doesn't mean it's easy. And so, here as a church, this is what I want to do. I want to, I want to give us, I guess, a new battle cry, uh, a, a vision, so to speak, uh, something for us to really attach to. And it is simple. It is practicing the way of Jesus together in Louisville. Man, that is, that is simple, but it's not easy. Think about it. Br- break it down for just a second practicing the way of Jesus. Notice it's not perfecting the way of Jesus. No, it takes practice, right? It takes practice and practice and practice. We want to practice the way of Jesus. And who do we want to do it with? We want to do it together. We want to practice the way of Jesus together because there is nothing in the Bible that elevates lone wolf Christianity. But Jesus, he started this church thousands of years ago and he died for this church. We believe we're supposed to do this together. We want to practice the way of Jesus together. And where do we want to do it? Right here. Uh, That's that's simple. God's not calling us to campus up in Toronto. He's not not calling us to to campus down in Tampa Bay. We are in Louisville, baby. That's where we're at. That's where we want to reach people with the gospel, with the good news that Jesus loves them. This is us. It's simple. But church, I just want to tell you, it won't be easy. This won't be easy. I mean, has it really been easy to this point? No. Has it been worth it to this point? Yeah. If we are really going to practice the way of Jesus, then, then it, gets, it gets dangerous because we're no longer just sitting on the sideline, but we're involved. We're in it. This love that Jesus talks about, I want to give you two ways to see it that we just read. Just two ways to see this love that Jesus is talking about. And the first one is that this love is rich. This love is It is deep. It is clear. It's bigger than you think. This love is rich. This love, this is the sort of love that brings peace where there's chaos. This is the sort of love that brings light where there is darkness. This is the sort of love that brings truth where there is confusion. This is the love that Jesus embodied and it changes lives. Yes, yours, but it could also change the lives of those that you love and it could change the lives of those you struggle with and you struggle to love. If there were ever a church that could, I think, capture the essence of these words, I think we would see a community changed. But here's the thing. Not because we're so perfect and so good that that God's love changed me, and I am perfect now. No. This love, yes, it changes you and I, and it continues to, but, but but this love reaches others in spite of, of our failures, in spite of our dysfunctions. In the season of life, I think my most common prayer has been, God, use me in spite of me. Because man, I mess this up a lot. My, my feelings get in the way. My emotions get exaggerated. I, I sin against people. I get in the way. God, use me in spite of me. And you know what the incredible thing is? Is that this love is rich and it's deeper than any failure I would have. This love still reaches others. And it's, again, it's not because we're so perfect, but it's because, it's because the love of Christ shines through those imperfections. 
and it's when we're honest, it's when we're real, it's when, it's when we say, I'm struggling, that Christ is magnified, he's glorified. Are you with me, church? Can I hear you? Are you with me, church? Because the love of God, it is so rich, it's so deep, it's so big, it can handle anything you throw at it. Your history, your secret sin, your insecurities. Let's not sell God so cheap that we act like we don't doubt, that we act like we don't struggle. Because if you doubt, if you struggle, if you are real, then as a church, we believe you belong here. Why? Because this love is rich. I want this church to practice the way of Jesus together. And so we're going to add, actually, we're going to add a value. You ready? We're going to add a value, and it's called unity. I know, I know. When, when we were compiling this, I was like, man, unity is all over the place. You know, it's, it's all about this. But it actually, it wasn't pronounced. It wasn't there. So we want to say that we also are going to add unity to this. And we are going to define unity this very, very simple way. We want to be known for the things we are for. That's it. That's it. We want to be known for the things we are for because how quickly is unity destroyed? As soon as we bring up that topic, how quickly is unity destroyed? As soon as we bring up this situation, let's let the world, let's let what's happening out there, let's let them get all radicalized and extreme and all. Let's be followers of the way. Let's say I can have opinions and I can worship God with you who has a different opinion. I, that's what I think unity looks like because nothing destroys the unity of a group than talking about your differences. And I love this church. I think it's a great reflection of heaven, but listen, we're not perfect and we're gonna step on each other's toes, but with great grace, we can remain united because this love is rich. And then just the second point, if you're the note taker and, you're, and you've got an A plus in Sunday school right now, here you go. Number two, it is that this love is risky. It's dangerous, it's unsafe. But John Wimber, he said, faith is spelled R-I-S-K. And here's what I mean by that. I want to help lead a church that's not known by pretty preaching or by its words, but I want to lead a church that is known by its love. This, this, this love that got Jesus killed, it's risky. But man, I think we should, I think we should love people that society casts to the side. I think of the women who are trapped in the adult entertainment industry. I think they need to know that God loves them and that freedom is available to them. I think that for the, the, the kids and the, and the teenagers who are going in and out of different homes, I think they should, they should know that there is freedom for them. There is love for them. That's the kind of church that I would want to lead. But this love, man, it's risky. It risks your reputation. It risks you getting messy sometimes. But look, in uh, Galatians 6, you won't see it behind me, so just listen. In Galatians 6, uh, I'm reading the message paraphrase. I just like the way it was, it was phrased. The Apostle Paul wrote, uh, if someone falls into sin, and we know them, right? We know those people. Okay, think of yourself for a sec, okay? If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore them. Save your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens and so complete the, the Christ's law. If you think you're too good for that, you are badly deceived. Listen, I, I just, I want to lead a church that loves first and asks questions second. This love isn't nice and perfect and clean all the time but it gets, it gets very messy because growing up, growing up, this is what I thought, this is what I thought faith was like. I thought, I thought real faith, I thought it was perfect. I thought it was clean, <clears throat> wrinkle-free. I thought this is what faith looks like. You don't struggle, you don't doubt. And, and it's supposed to be a perfect picture. It's supposed to look perfect. And so you show up to church with your hair all fixed. You're supposed to show up the church in everything that, that makes you look like you got it all together. It's untouched. No stains, no questions, no doubts are allowed. But the longer I've walked this faith out, the longer I've been a Christian, I've discovered it does not look like this. But instead it looks like, it looks like this. Come on up, come on, come on up, Mark, come on up. 
Follow me all the way up here. <clears throat> Brother, listen, I love you and I am for you. And I know right now you are struggling with mental illness right now. I know I, you are struggling with depression right now and I'm with you because while I've never struggled with that, I wanna meet you where you're at and I wanna love you exactly as you are because you're not alone. And I know the devil wants to rip you apart, but you are in a church that will love you and come alongside you and will get messy with you. And this is who we want to be. This is us. You are loved, my brother, and you are not alone. Oh, I, church, could you imagine what would happen if we actually got a little bit messy with people and we let people be just a little bit of themselves? And we said, you can struggle and you can come here and you can be part of what we're doing. But then there's something else. Then there's something else. Because, because brother, listen, I know we live different lives and I know you go through things that I haven't gone through. You have a different experience growing up in this world than I do. And while I don't understand that fully, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to learn because, because brother, if you don't feel safe, I don't feel safe. If you say things are different for you, then they're different for me. I'm willing to get in this with you and say, I can learn and I can grow and I can be with you because you belong here, because you belong here, brother and you are love. Church, could you imagine for a second what would happen if we put these walls down and instead of saying we have to act right, we got to get all these things together, we got to make sure that we have all of it together on Sunday morning. Could you imagine what would happen to this community if they knew these are real people, imperfect people, but man, they love God. Man, I don't feel so judged all the time, but there is love for that. There is love for that. And then, you know, there are other people though who come in Come on in. Let's, let's, let's talk immediately. Because I know you're struggling right now with your faith and you are deconstructing and, and you feel like you got all the questions. Maybe you don't even believe anymore. Brother, you belong here. We are glad you're here. We are thankful you're here. We are honored you would still come here and, and put yourself at risk like this. Put yourself in a position to maybe even be hurt again. But while we won't have all the answers, could we point you to Jesus? Could we say you can doubt here? This is a safe place. Ask those questions because we love you. Because we love you. Church, could you imagine what your life would look like if we got a little uncomfortable? Could you imagine what would happen if we put ourselves out there and we chose to be a church not known by how we follow all the rules and we get it just right and we pray the right prayers, but we're a church that's just real, that practices the way of Jesus together in Louisville. And if you think, well, I don't want to get messy. I don't want to know the ins and outs of people's lives. I don't want to go there. Can I tell you about someone who got really messy for you? Can I tell you about someone that hung on a cross and his blood was poured out all over him? He did it for you. He got messy for you. I think of the woman who was caught in adultery in the gospel of John. Jesus didn't condemn the woman, but he got down in that woman's dirt and he loved her and he sent everyone else away. That's the Jesus I know. That's the Jesus who lived and died and rose again. Jesus is not afraid of your mess. He's not afraid of your history, your insecurities. He's not afraid of your questions. This is a church where we say you belong here. This isn't for the faint of heart. It's just, if we're going to reach the lost, we need to be prepared because it's going to get messy up in here. You know how crazy Louisville is? It's going to get crazy in here, but I'm willing. I'm willing. Church, are you? This isn't a rhetorical question. Are you willing? Are you willing to do something about this church? Because I am, and I want to be a church that's moving. It's not going to be easy, and it will get hard, but this is work worth doing. This is why the church exists, that yes, we would live by faith, but we'd be known by love. This is, this is what I believe the church should look like. Worship team, get, get on up here. I want, I want to worship with you, but I want this to, to, to resonate with you. I want this to get into your hearts, to get into your bones, that faith is so much more than a Sunday morning, 90 minute experience, but faith is real, that the love of God is real, and you get to be the hands and feet of a God who loves you exactly as you are, but way too much to, to let you stay where you are. I know it's, it's going to get messy, 
It's going to get hard. And it's going to re- require something we don't like. It's going to require sacrifice. It's going to require us to get out of that boat, so to speak. But when you finally do, miracles happen. When you finally stop settling for the comfortable Christianity and you decide to actually follow the radical teachings of Jesus, to love the unlovable, to reach the unreachable, to be in the presence of people that ruin your reputation. That's what the love of God looks like. It is not perfect. It is not wrinkle-free. It's not this pristine, Instagrammable, postable sort of faith all the time. It's messy, it's real, it's worth it. It's what Jesus came and he lived for and he, and, and, and he died for. And he rose for. 